let's plot the fanning friction factor or the skin friction coefficient along the wall, and I will get into the definition of, uh, of this um, as we are doing the, um, the calculation on the plot. So if I go to the velocity vectors, um, so I basically, I can double click on that. I, I turned off everything else, or most of the other things. And if I go to a location like this, um, okay, I know what the, uh, the slope of the axial velocity is, okay? dvz by dr, um, and this is at the wall. And if I multiply that by mu, that will give me the, um, the wall shear. So let's plot that along the wall. So it's, it's post-processing, you know, the, all, so this comes from the, um, the cell center values. Um, okay, so I'll go, to, I'll say chart, and I'll call it um, fanning friction factor. Um, so I'm in the chart viewer and then I'll go for data series. I will say along the wall and along the horizontal axis, I want the axial distance, which as we saw is X and along the vertical axis, I want the wall shear in the axial direction. In this case, the wall shear is in the axial direction. So there's no radial component for instance. Okay, and say apply and I get the wall shear distribution. Um, and you can see, you know, once the flow becomes fully developed, the wall shear doesn't change, which is, uh, which is what we expect. And initially you get a very high wall shear. In fact, it's infinite when the, at the uh, inlet um, because our boundary layer thickness is zero. Okay, so that looks plausible. Now really, uh, and to get the fanning friction factor, what we have to do is uh, take the wall shear and then normalize it. Okay, so, and the normalization is by dynamic pressure. So here rho is constant and we'll use the average velocity, which makes sense. And that's the skin friction factor or a uh, skin friction coefficient or the fanning friction factor. And we can actually calculate that in fluent and, uh, and transfer it to the post processor. And one thing to keep in mind is in fluent, we have to, um, input these as the, the denominator as reference values. So I'll get to that. Um, so I'll go to Fluent and I will um, say calculation uh, data file quantities, okay, under run calculation. Um, I should get, I should see a skin friction coefficient over here. Okay, that'll transfer it to the, um, the post processor, and but we need to set the right reference values for the denominator, okay? And that's 1.2 for the density and 0.1 for the, um, the incoming, the average velocity. So when, I, when it calculates tau w over half rho u squared, so it's basically going to use uh, rho from here, and then it's going to use the velocity reference over here. Okay, so usually when you're doing post-processing on non-dimensional quantities, you have to come into the reference values panel. And it turns out we have to run one iteration to force it to transfer it to the post-processor, which is less than ideal. So it didn't change the solution. Um, but now you see I'm without that iteration I wouldn't get the refresh. So now if I say the refresh, it should have transferred the skin friction coefficient and so if I come in here um, I should and I see now I have the skin friction coefficient. And in the fully developed region, you know, it's 0 0.02 um, and the theory, you know, for Poisson flow says that the skin friction coefficient should be 16 by the Reynolds number, um, 
this uh, for fully developed flow. So it should be, so this value should be 16 by 800, which is 0 0.02. So um, 0.02 is what we predict, and that looks right. And you can save the project. And I'll say request license because it's with Fluent.